Hey everyone, this is Austin Schur here with We Write About Music, and today I am thrilled to be speaking with Dean Johannesson. He has just released a fantastic new record called Cautionary Tales, and I am super excited to talk to him all about it. Dean, I want to sincerely thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to do this. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Austin. How are you, buddy? I am great. This is awesome. for, basically the first thing I'm doing today, and I don't think the day is getting better after this. Because oh man, <laughs> we get <laughs> <I appreciate> that. <laughs> we get to talk about this awesome record. It's called Cautionary Tales. If you missed it, and I love it. I mean, there's not much else to say. Like it is super diverse. It's fun. And it's filled with heart and soul, and it just is great and original on a time where a lot of music is not great and original. So, yeah. Thanks, um. Man. I really the first thing I want to do and kick it off is I want to know what it's about, like what inspired you making this record. Yeah, I um so I live in Sarasota or at least close to Sarasota. And um this is like the winter home of the Ringling Brothers Circus. Oh. So a lot of the songs, um, you know, just my landscape, I pass the circus setup like almost like seasonally I'm passing the circus tents like every day. And sometimes wow. I see trapeze artists like rehearsing their acts and stuff. And um, and years ago, I read Water, uh, Water for Elephants by Sarah Gruen. Yeah. And that book, what I liked about that book more than anything, uh, more than the movie or anything, is like taking actual real history and putting it into a novel to kind of let people know what happened, you know, the the War of Currents and what happened with Topsy and uh, the elephant and um you know, Jake Leg, uh, you know, paralysis during prohibition. Yeah. Um, so I started taking that kind of that influence in writing songs with a historical sort of informed by hist history yeah. and uh, bringing those buried stories kind of to light. And um, and I just had a blast doing it. And I thought the the music should be representative of the time. So that 20s and 30s era swing and jazz seemed to be appropriate to tell you know, appropriate soundtrack for these stories that I was trying to convey to people in writing these songs. So that's kind of the gist of it, really. That's awesome. No, listen, there's no better music than music that comes from personal experience. Yeah. I mean, I say this all the time, but it feels like a lot of today's music is just manufactured stories. Maybe it happened, maybe it didn't happen. But to know that it's really right in your backyard is that much cooler in a way. Yeah, yeah. And to sort of honor it with the time and creating the specific sound. Um, Obviously, the one thing that sticks out immediately is there's a ton of diverse instrumentation, and it really just like it sounds like there's a ton going on at once. Did you right. have help putting this together in terms of? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can't imagine that you're one guy doing all of this at once. No, I wish I had that talent, but I don't. Oh, I had yeah, to rely. Yeah, right. <laughs> I had to really rely on, uh, and that's why this record took a long time to come out, and I felt a little bit bad about that. But I really was. In my head, I had these sounds in my head that the, it should be, um, and the musicians that I use actually exceeded the sounds in my head. You know, it's like I had this idea, it's like, oh, clarinet should be here, and a violin should be here, and trombone should be here. Sure. All that stuff was in my head, but the way that they, this guy Jay um, from a band called the Jazz Fools, I kind of hired him toward the latter end of finishing this record to do the horn parts, and he actually wrote uh, parts for the horn guys to play. Um, there's a local guy named James Suggs, who's a phenomenal trumpet player. He came in on the second, you know, nice. secondary um, thing, um, Graham Ray and violin. So I had all these people that I had met or that I had respected and was just hoping that they would say yes to actually throwing down some of their talents on my record. And yeah. they did, and they did a beautiful job. And I'm just, you know, I just love what they did and how, how much they helped me out, you know? So yeah, it was great. <laughs> yeah, that's a huge deal. No, seriously, finding people like that or knowing people like that, that can play your non-traditional you know guitar or bass or something like that yeah is like, yeah it does feel rare and rare nowadays yeah um obviously there's a ton going on here stylistically it's not it doesn't stick to one genre and of course it pulls from sounds 100 years ago so right. what do you call this for someone that hasn't listened what's sort of like the elevator pitch yeah um well it, you know that question's come up a lot and i used I'm to sure. say yeah, it's I, you know, and that's actually a question that I love because it means people are listening and they're wondering about it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not easy to kind of pinpoint, and um, and it's not so. It's what it is is it's just old old music sure. that people haven't heard in a long time. So it gives me a chance to talk about my influences. A lot of it's inspired by like Django Reinhardt style hot club jazz, mm. but it's not traditional in that way. There's a little bit of American roots. I call it circus swing and American roots music. Um, it's inspired by American rootsy kind of music, 
and uh, and I started using circus swing because it's not really hot club jazz. Um, it is swing music. I don't say jazz usually because jazz people's idea of what jazz is, their perception of it. Speaking of elevator pitch, it could be elevator right. jazz. It could be bebop era. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Right. So no, I'm no, very you're, careful. You're totally right. Yeah, and I think swing is a very important thing uh, for the music. And uh, and I actually get swing dancers that come out to. Um, to hear me play and nice. we've played for a couple of us uh, swing Indy hop and st pete is having us okay. do their swing night coming up here and so the swing part of it but anyway to get to your question to make sure. it simple circus swing and american roots music is what i say usually inspired by bob wills Django reinhardt and louis jordan as far as like older artists that we kind of that i kind of pull off of for my influences very cool um <laughs> are you by chance familiar with the artist father john misty have you ever heard of him before you know i saw something that you guys wrote up and i looked him i looked him up i looked really up the record yeah you guys kind of turned me on to him actually and uh and i listened to some of that record and i was like oh my gosh yeah like he's yeah kind of, it's this it's i think it was one similar. of his Les last releases or something yeah like that. Was which like was that? a total odd not oddball but like compared departure. to the yeah total departure from what he's made in the past but it fully embodies that sort of like 20 30s circus yeah. swing where it like and <laughs> and i and the only reason i bring this up is because it wasn't universally liked by his fan base so yeah, i'll just say right. that it's it's definitely right. <laughs> like an outlier in the discography sure. and as a fan of that music because like it's what my parents had on in the car and it's what my grandparents showed me like i'm very familiar right. with it i didn't love his take on it but this yeah this and i'm totally gonna blow your ego up right now oh my god this, this this record truly feels like that's how it should be done in a modern era oh wow it's not necessarily like the use of instrumentation because there isn't a ton of like difference there but at the same time i just think the way that you kind of compose this feels more natural and like an ode to the time it's it's almost tough to put it into words but i much prefer your take on it oh, so geez, man. yeah Gosh, i so sincerely appreciate that and you know you're you when you when you're trying to honor an older style of music you hope that you're getting it right it's like anytime like you do a cover that's a classic you know sometimes you right. avoid those because you're like i can't do it any better you know yeah. there's that talk about um hallelujah and it's like jeff buckley did oh, it and geez. he did probably yeah. the best version of it so it's yeah. like okay we're done with that one <laughs> right like no 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 totally it's like it's his it's his song now <laughs> yeah when you I can feel do that it, way, right sure. yeah yeah totally. so but yeah. you know um part of the uh thing is that i you know like i said with this record taking a long time uh i studied a lot i read a lot i listened a lot before i actually totally. started i started writing those songs but then as i listened to more Django reinhardt and like stokola rosenberg and um you know nat king cole and just really diving into that old style and really try to embrace it and learn and, and study it before i put it out and maybe yeah. that's maybe that's what you might be picking up on is that i i did a lot of work it wasn't just like i'm writing i'm gonna write this you know record it was really i fully immersed myself in everything the history the music yeah. the whole thing you know so i don't know if i nailed it but i Ben, I love the music so much. And that's, sure. I was paying tribute and honoring Absolutely. it. It's basically the thing, you know. So no, there's, there's, <laughs> I can assure you, there's no feeling that you half assed it. Like you fully. <laughs> like, I got my whole ass not, in there. Not exactly. And I'm not saying that other artists' take <laughs> on that style is yeah. them, is them, you know, not fully immersing themselves in the sound. But at the same yeah. time, like, again, there's a real wholesome and like, passion behind this that there isn't in other similar records oh, sweet, hold man. yourself Thank to you. that standard um not to take away the focus from here but I obviously I want to look forward a little bit you're an artist sure. I assume you're always creating or getting ideas out there in some capacity is this more of a concept record as opposed to what you might create in the future like will we experience experimentation yeah um yeah I think you know, I've got a collection of songs that have been inspired by like touring and traveling. Um, mm -hmm. And they they have probably a little bit more of the American roots vibe to okay. them than the the straight up swing. Um, so I think I'm sort of branching out in that direction. You know, sometimes it's like you don't know where the inspiration is going to come from and you just kind of have to follow it. So I'm kind of in that vein of like, and I've got, for some reason, I've got these, like, I've got one called Indiana Ford. I've got one called Semi-Tennessee. Sure. Um, I've got these sort of location songs and a lot of it, and maybe it's because, you know, with the pandemic being down and not being able to tour, I was missing being on the road so much. Oh, yeah. That these, maybe that inspiration of these places that I couldn't go to are kind of coming into my 
focus and that's where some of the newer songs are sort oh, of like. you know resonating um and then there's some darker stuff that's going on that's that's kind of grittier swing maybe like a tom weeds kind of thing i can't mm-hmm. sing like him but <laughs> okay <I'm... laughs> right. Right. but uh but yeah so to answer your question i think that um you know that it's not that it i don't know if i would call it a concept record but although it fits in a, in a lot of ways um but i was just in writing those songs it took me so long it was like you know if i was smart enough to know that in the industry now that you should put out singles every two months and follow that up with all you know what i mean Uh, um but it's just like it was uh, that collection was so important to me and i felt like it told the story really i was inspired by like peter and the wolf with the instrumentation of you know musician music representing characters and then i watched the greatest show on earth by cecil b demille and that had a lot of a lot and then you know the songs are in a specific order a very specific order for right. the storyline that follows it you know so so maybe it is you know a concept record but uh you know <laughs> it's a loose term it's a loose term yeah. for sure when i say concept record i tend to mean more like album experience like yeah. it, it feels very 100%. uniform obviously there's always songs that you can pick out that this one sounds slightly different but yeah. at the most like you know you click play and you let it run and it feels like a completed piece of work instead of yeah. just like a smattering of oh well this is what i came up with over the past year and right it's not right. that which is obviously yeah so yeah. i mean whatever comes in the future i feel like well you also brought up a great point about being in a pandemic and not touring and that obviously lacks personal experience you're not out there you're looking at the same four walls in your room or you're yeah. staying in your own neighborhood for the most part and yeah you start gaining experience from the media you're consuming whether it be old movies and films and tv shows and music and it's just like yeah if that's what you want to create then that's what came out of it and that it acts as a time capsule almost yeah yeah 100 percent. i agree with you man yeah crazy yeah there's some writers that talk about how they didn't write as much because they they rely so much on that human experience that they didn't have. And yeah. so it became difficult for them to write. And I think about that a lot because I've become some sort of a homebody when I don't have gigs and I gig quite a bit, but sure. you know, sometimes I'm like, dude, just go to a coffee shop and sit in the corner and yeah, you know what I mean? Like wait yeah, yeah. for a minute and, and pick up a conversation and maybe it'll lead yeah. to a song, you know? <laughs> no, no. I, Hey, I'm right there with you. <laughs> just like I could work in an office. I could work in a bedroom, but like, there's nothing like being out there and you feel like you're part of the world and you're contributing for a second. Yeah, 100%. It's, uh, it's, you know, you can't replace it. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, Speaking of shows, do you have anything coming up or like, how has that been working for you? Has it been steady? What's, what's this year looking like in terms of touring? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm in Florida, so like we're, we're kind of like wild west, like opened up full on and. Oh gigging, yeah. It's like, been a I've while. Been gigging. It's been crazy. You yeah. Know? So, um, and I'm, but I'm starting to focus, like I'm going up to Knoxville next week oh, cool. for the blue plate special uh, radio show. Nice. uh wdvx or whatever and um playing a couple shows in georgia on my way up um and i'm planning a tour to texas in july uh okay. for a house concert out there in houston um i just applied to dripping spring songwriter festival it happens in october which i've been to a few times and nice. so yeah i'm really wanting to w- but what i think i need to do because i'm in florida i think i need to i kind of need to explore the southeast a little bit and and work that regional circle and start revisiting those places over and over again to kind of build that and then slowly but surely kind of work my way out you know because I'm willing to travel I mean I've been as far north as Buffalo and far west as California so but it it should make sense you know I'm kind of I'm really trying to make a plan for everything that I'm doing what you know how the record comes out how the singles come out how the everything is so important you know what I mean it takes a lot of work you know (laughs) oh yeah no no it's all it's all strategy listen if if only it was as easy as just calling up a venue and saying hey I'll be there next week like no because because then yeah because then the sort of the follow-up to that is how does it work with your band like do you have a band is it just you like how do you recreate the sound which is so expansive yeah yeah that's the hard part i have a trio that plays locally but they're okay. very much they're very much a local band we um mm-hmm. mark pezzo's on upright bass max kelly on percussion he plays sort of like um the cajon with brushes and a timbal and a splash cymbal so it's got okay. this kind of old school feel to the sound of his sure. you know and also with with the drums i love the drums i miss them but i also know that they can be overpowering in the song and the story can get lost if it's too bombastic sure. so the percussion element works great 
Um, I still not really sure how to how to get to a point of touring the band, but I my th thought is right now it's easier for me to lay the groundwork and and test markets and see where what I'm doing right. is working, and then I'll know if I can afford to bring the guys back and or up with me or whatever, you know. So sure. that's my plan. <laughs> no, hey, listen, it's you got to have a plan, but sometimes yeah. the plan doesn't always work, that's especially true in the music industry nowadays. Yeah, so, yeah, no joke. yeah, you never know. Um, Going on with that, though, is there one song off of this record that you're most looking forward to playing in a live setting? One that you think is just going to translate the best? Um, the the song that gets a lot of attention right now is that Red Eyed, Red Light, Good Night. Um, okay. That's kind of the closer uh, track for us. And I think it works whether it's me solo or with the band or seems to get pretty good attention. But there's a smattering of, you know, some people like Walkers because the the um the story of the you know prohibition and the depression and in the Jake leg that people were getting the paralysis mm -hmm. drinking tainted liquors and stuff and yeah. so there's it, you know I think what people are relating to which I'm grateful for is that if they know the story of the songs it's making them like certain songs more than others maybe because they re they appreciate that story right so you know that's an important part of it too and then then that becomes like how do I get to tell this story so that people can connect with it you know it's like playing enough listening rooms is a hard thing too not yeah. just playing background music gigs so you know it's a trick to kind of get people to know like what the story is so they can connect with the song but uh but i would say you know to answer your question like red eyed red light seems to be a kind of across the board everybody seems to like that tune and yeah. uh, it always makes me happy and i think that one what i love about the recording on that one that was like a sort of a one take sort of like oh yeah in the, mo in the moment yeah we brought nice. the horn the, the horn player came in after we did that but the um the rhythm section that i hired to work that song uh dan de gregory on drums rob pastor on bass we nailed that pretty quick, you know, and then it was, it's a live take of me playing guitar and singing. And then when James <laughs> Suggs came in to play trumpet and he played trumpet on it, like sort of off the cuff. And it was just like, wow, it just, there I don't know, just you know, those magic moments. Oh, yeah. yeah. They don't always happen, but when they do, it's like, yeah. it, you just remember it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? No, you never feel more in the moment than that. Like, Oh, we are making music in the studio. Yeah. Right? Like this is yeah. happening. I love that. And it feels it feels a little bit better than all the multi-tracking stuff that we get into in the 500. Yeah. Like, you know, if I three or four takes, I'm just like, I don't remember what verse I just say. I don't remember. Like, no, I like to do not. it, you know, quick and easy as, as possible, you know. Mm -hmm. I fully so. understand. I get it. I get it. Um, I have a couple more questions for you. Sure. We've already touched on this a little bit, um, but I can I still consider it's very much the beginning of this year, even though it's the first week of March. Sure. Things yeah, are yeah. zooming by quickly. But what are some sort of like lofty goals that you'd hopefully like to hit for the rest of 2023? Um, man. Yeah. I, um, I think just, you know, going back to what we were talking about with the touring and stuff, yeah. you know, I really want to get this record. I'm trying to get, uh, I'm trying to get a handle on the business end of music. Cause I haven't put out an official record in a long time. I put out a couple live releases. So sure. um, I'm working on getting my YouTube numbers up. I'm working on, you know, getting my plays up. I'm working on getting more people on my mailing list. Like that's probably the most important thing to me. Yeah. I think is that I want to establish this fan base, uh, friend base, whatever you want to call it, you know, um, and really kind of grow that. And, and the organic approach to that is really important to me. And it sure. takes a lot of work. So I think my goal this year is to really kind of connect with as many people as I can that like my music, get to know them better, bring them into the fold and expand the family. You know, that's a big one for me. That's what so, it's all about. No, that's yeah. a great goal and obviously a lofty one. But yeah, <laughs> one that is doable. It just yeah. takes time and effort and consistency. And it's like, obviously you have your own life to worry about and it can't all be music, but you know what? You do what you can. Yeah, Love absolutely. That. Um, Dean, my last question for you here is it's basically for the person that is going to discover you from this, what is an opening message that you'd like to say to them before they listen to your music for the first time? Man, um, you know, the big thing for me right now is realizing people's time is so important and their, you know, attention span is so short. So yeah. really like, you know, it's, it's a thing that I tag in a lot of the videos, just like, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for giving me just a portion of your time today. Yeah. You know, it means so much because I know how, how much you're bombarded with these days. And if you're taking a second to listen to my music, I sincerely appreciate it. That's awesome. A great answer. Yeah. Truly. <laughs> uh, seriously. Hey, listen, uh, I want to thank you so much again for taking the time. Please let me plug your music for you again here. 
Uh, sure. If you guys missed it the first time around, the record is called Cautionary Tales. We will have the links in our articles that you can listen and share and follow along and do all that fun stuff. It sounds like there's so much more coming in some capacity this year. Um, it's never been a better time to follow along. And truly, I thank you so much for taking the time. It means a lot. Oh, Austin, I'm honored, man. Thank you guys for all that you do and uh, promoting original music. It, it's, it means so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome, man. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I hope to speak soon. All right, man. Have a good one. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.